Hey guys, hey Todd, welcome back to my channel. Today, as you can see, we are in a new kitchen. It is 2021, we are stepping the game up. If you were watching, then you know that I moved into my first ever apartment in New York City, and this is the first video I'm filming here in my new kitchen. Isn't it pretty beautiful? I feel like I tried to capture the same vibe as last set. Now let's just get to the food. Today we're making homemade Pani Puri. Pani Puri is my favorite Indian little snack. It are these little Indian puffs with potato on the inside filled with all the different masalas and spices and little mint water and chutney. It is incredibly delicious. Let's get cooking. All right, first off, it's now time to make the puri. This is something you can buy, but you already know I like to make everything I can homemade. So I'm gonna add some semolina flour into my bowl. And then to that, I'm also gonna add in just a little, little bit of all purpose flour in addition to that. And now we're gonna add in a little salt. Now I'm not gonna do salt by action because it's so little, but a little salt into there and some baking powder as well. And then finally, let's now just mix this up and it's that easy. I'm gonna add in a little bit of oil into there just for a little bit of fat in the dough. Now we're gonna add in some water and really just wanna mix this until it forms a very firm dough. This should be the perfect amount of water. So if you think it's a little bit dry, just keep on mixing, give it a chance. I promise you the water will come together and then you're gonna have a firm, but also very smooth dough for our puri. All right, as you can see, this is now ready. I'm just going to place this to the side and I'm going to knead on my surface. We just wanna knead it until it comes fully together. Not that much kneading is required. It is going to be almost like pasta dough, to be honest. You could probably take this and make handmade pasta out of it, but instead, we're making puri. All right, our dough is now done. I'm going to grab our bowl and we're just going to cover this with a towel and we're gonna let this rise. Not, not really rise, we're gonna let it just chill out for about 30 minutes while we make our potatoes. All right, now it is time for the potatoes. Over here I have some beautiful Yukon gold potatoes. And what we're gonna do is we're just going to peel our potatoes, cut them up into cubes, and what we are making is this delicious spiced potatoes that we're gonna add into the Pani Puri, which is really the starch and what makes it super filling and super delicious. I mean, for me, anything with potatoes, I like, basically. Okay, now that our potatoes are peeled, we're going to cut them into pretty small pieces, about a fourth an inch chunks. I will show you just like this. So we're gonna cut into planks, then cut into matchsticks, and then finally cut them into little cubes just like that. They need to be pretty small because we're going to be putting them into our puri. So that is the perfect size. I'm just gonna repeat with the rest of my potatoes. These are gonna be a very quick cook. I'm expecting these to cook maybe five minutes or so because our potatoes are so small, they should cook very, very quickly. Now I'm just gonna let this boil until they are fully cooked and then it's almost eating time. I am very excited. Okay, our potatoes are now done. The way you know is you just take a fork and just try to pierce the potatoes. And if they easily pierce, that is called fork soft, which is all you need for the potatoes. All right, I'm now going to head over to the sink. And in my sink right here, I just have a colander placed into there. And I'm just going to now drain my potatoes. Look at that. Is there anything more exciting than cooked potatoes? The answer is no. All right, now we're gonna take our drained potatoes Pour them into here, that looks great. All right, a few of them a little escaped into there. Now, it is time to add some seasoning to our potatoes. We're gonna make our potatoes super duper flavorful. Now, we're going to start with some cilantro. We're just going to chop that up. A nice rough chop is really all you need. All right, I'm gonna throw these into here. Then I'm gonna add in some coriander powder, some cumin powder and some chopped masala, which is, in my opinion, the best Indian spice mix of all time on potatoes. It makes them so addicting. Just, you've got to try it. It has so many great spices. Now I'm going to add in a little bit of chili powder for some heat. And of course, just a little bit of some salt bay action into there as well. And that is literally it. Let's just grab ourselves a wooden spoon, mix this up until fully combined. And that is all you got to do with the potatoes. They are so easy. We're really going to add more of the flavor in with the chutneys and the mint water. We just want to add in a little bit of flavor here and they're so delicious. All right, let me just give one a try. Mm. That chopped masala is life changing. If you've never tried it before, go to the store, buy some chopped masala it will forever change potatoes for you. All right, our potatoes are now done. Now it's time to clean up and make the mint water. 
Now, funny little story about this mint water. Me and my brother Yoni always loved going to Indian restaurants with our parents, and we would always get Pani Puri. And the guy at the restaurant that we'd always go to told us that the mint water was called dirty water. Then the next time we went to a different restaurant, we ordered Pani Puri and we asked the waiter, we're like, we have some more of the dirty water. And they were so offended that we referred to their mint water as dirty water, but that's just what we knew it was called. So to make our mint water, we have some mint, some cilantro into our blender. I'm also gonna add in a little bit of tamarind paste. This will add in really great kind of tanginess to this chutney. Then I'm gonna add in some chaat masala, kind of keeping with the theme of the chaat masala in our potatoes. And for a little sweetness, we're gonna add in some brown sugar. You can also use jaggery, which is more traditional. That's an Indian sugar, but brown sugar is more accessible. So I'm gonna add that into there. And then I'm gonna add in a little chunk of ginger into there as well. Now, time for the spice. We're gonna add in two to three chopped up, or you don't really have to chop them up, Indian chilies into there based on your spice level. Uh, that looks good. Now, let's quickly just slice up a lemon and we're gonna add in the juice of a lemon into there as well. So as you can see, it is super easy. And both the potatoes and this mint water, you can make way ahead so you can just assemble your Pani Puri. It is something that I recommend making ahead if you're having people over and then just quickly assembling right before everyone eats. All right, our lemon juice is in there and I'm also gonna add in just about half a cup of water. Should be good to start. Let's pop on the lid. It is time to blend. I'm so excited. All right, here we go. Let's just blend that up. Look at that beautiful green color. Wow. Okay, I have my puri dough. It has now been rested. It is looking really, really great. Now, what we're gonna do, we're going to section this off. Maybe I'll just use a knife instead of my hands. Section it off, and we now want to just roll it out until it is nice and thin because we are then going to cut it with some cutters. Now, this type of dough shouldn't be that sticky, so you might not actually need to flour your surface at all. Just make sure you keep on moving it throughout the rolling so that it doesn't stick to your board. All right, it is now nice and thin. It is very important that your dough is super thin. You almost wanna be able to see your hands through it. That is looking great. Now I'm gonna take about a two inch cookie cutter and just cut out little rounds of the dough for us to fry and turn into puri. Bam, bam and then peel it away, and we have these perfect little rounds. All right, now we have these perfect little rounds. I'm going to place them here, and I'm just gonna repeat with the rest of my dough to cut out tons of little pani puri. Trust me, you wanna just fry them all up at once because they are very, very, very yummy, and you're not gonna to wanna to stop eating to fry more. So you really wanna just fry them all up and then start eating. All right, all my pani puri are made. Over here on the stovetop, I have a large cast iron pot full of vegetable oil that I'm preheating now to about 375 to 400. You really wanna fry this at a hot temp. Okay, we're about 400. That is perfect. It is now frying time. Now, you should know this about making homemade pani puri. It sometimes, for random ones, will not fully work, but let's just do a test one. It should puff up full of air. If it doesn't, don't worry. It might not for this time. Let's see, it should. All right, oh, and there we go. It is now puffing up. See that? was beautiful. We're gonna make that little pocket of air on the inside that then we little gonna poke our finger into to make a hole, stuff it with the potatoes and all the other things, and then it is super delicious. Okay, that was a major success. I'm now just going to fry up the rest at about 400 degrees Fahrenheit until they all puff up, and you want them to be a light golden brown color. Okay, I'm so happy that worked. I was like nervous. I was like, all right, first one, please work on camera, and it did. Oh, and they're all working. Welcome to Aton's Pani Puri Factory. This is so exciting. I love that this is what gets me excited. Like, this is probably the most excited I've been in the past like week, and it's about Pani Puri. That basically sums me up. Drain, and then place onto a cooling rack over a baking sheet to really drain off all the excess oil. All right, our other three are now done. Let's drain off the oil. I am like in a state of shock how well these turned out. I mean, I made this many times, but usually at least a few of them fail, but who knows, maybe today will be a massive success. I'm now just going to fry up the rest and we are even closer to eating. So I'm getting increasingly excited as this goes on. Look at those puff. Okay, it's time to assemble. I'm going to grab an individual puri right over here. There's always gonna be a more delicate side and a little bit of a firmer side. You're gonna take the delicate side, 
use your finger to poke holes. Then you're gonna go over to our potatoes, stuff it with potatoes. Then I'm also going to add on just a little bit of red onion, some pomegranate. Again, you can really customize this. There are no rules here. Then I'm gonna take some delicious homemade tamar chutney. The recipe is on my website. And then finally is the dirty water or mint water, depending on how you wanna call it. And you're just going to pour that into your puri. And then you basically wanna immediately eat it. You don't really let it sit. You wanna eat it and you're gonna go, cheers to Pani Puri. Mmm. Delicious. Mm. Wow, that is jam packed with flavor. Pani Puri is seriously one of my all time favorite foods. I think it's at least in top 10, maybe even top five. You put it in your mouth, you have the crunchy exterior and the soft potato on the inside that has great flavor from the spices we added to it. Then the tamarind on there gives it a nice kind of tanginess, some sweetness. You have the onions for a little bit of zing. You have the pomegranate for some sweetness. And then finally, you top it off with the mint water, which is spicy, herby. You put it all in your mouth and it is a delicious bite. It is a great way to start off the meal. And honestly, I love them so much. I just would probably eat about 20 of these and then that can be my meal. If you need meat, I'm gonna be making and eating more pani puri and then I'll get to the outro a little bit later because I just need to eat this. It is so delicious. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, be sure to let me know by hitting the like button, click the big red subscribe button to join the YouTube fam, and comment down below what is your all-time favorite Indian snack. I would love to know. All right, if you need me, I'm going to be devouring the rest of my Pani Puri. Bye.